Good morning, friends. Welcome to our homestead. They are shutting down communications all over the place. I don't know if you heard about the news the other day that happened in France. I'll talk about that in a second. But it's important for us to communicate with one another. And in today's video, I am going to talk about how they're shutting down free speech communication all over the place and that you need to pay attention to that. I'm also going to talk about how I am going to communicate with you in the future coming up. And I'm going to talk about securing your private information because that is under attack too. And something happened in April that you got to know about if you don't know about it already. Let's talk about it. Okay, friends, if you didn't hear the other day, Pavel Durov, the creator of Telegram, which is an encrypted app for communications, and texting communications was arrested in France. Governments hate when people can communicate between themselves without their knowledge. They trumped up some charges about him being responsible for what people were saying to each other on his own app. Even though the app's been around for like 15 years and people have been communicating on it for a long time, of course, they just arrested him the other day. Why? Because they're starting to shut communications down. That gentleman, Pavel Durov, left Russia because they were trying to suppress his technology for communication between people. So he was a French citizen, and I think he was a citizen of the UAE. Well, then France turned around, a supposedly freer country, and arrested him on ridiculous charges. Why? Because they're trying to cut off the heads of what they deem are snakes. But we know that these aren't snakes. These are means of people communicating between one another without government snooping. Now, will they take umbrage to this video of me just telling you that? Who knows? But information needs to get out between all of us. Additionally, the other day, the gentleman who started Rumble, I think his name is Chris Pavlovsky, he left France. He was in Europe just doing business. He flew back to the United States really quickly after what happened to Pavel. Why? Because Rumble is being banned in certain countries. Rumble is banned in China. Rumble is banned in uh, Russia. Rumble is restricted in France, and they've tried to ban it. And a few other countries like Brazil, and I can't remember all of them. But they're shut, trying to shut down Rumble. Why? Because Chris doesn't suppress free speech on that platform. They don't want you and I talking to one another. So friends, I'm working on other ways to communicate with you. And that is going to be on other platforms, on some forums that I'm a, a part of right now. Uh, there's one with Danny from Deep South Homestead. I can't remember the name of it. I just jumped on it the other day. And I'm also going to potentially be writing a book about everything that we are doing here in ebook. And I will be just telling you about that on this channel and where you can go to get it. We do have a website, same name, countrylivingexperience.com, and it's very rudimentary at this point. I haven't touched it in a long time, but with this recent um, challenge of communication with you on here, I am starting to revamp that. And if we want to stay in contact with one another, there's a form over there which you can fill out with just your name and email address. I'm not going to spam you or sell your information to anybody. I've got a Facebook page, Instagram, and email, and you can contact me in any one of those places places as well. Just keep in mind that it's going to take me a while to respond to you on there just because of the flood of interest that I get on the channel. That's going to mean a lot more work for me and I need your support with that. I need your support by disseminating that information to other people. But friends, this has happened throughout history. Governments and people in power always try to suppress knowledge and information that the common person really needs. And that is only so that they can retain power. This happened in Bible times. It happened before that. It happens now and it's happened forever. So for my Christian friends, we've all heard of the dark ages, right? This is a time where the word of God was locked up in churches and the only people who were allowed to read it were the priests. And then they disseminated that information to you. Well, they didn't do a very good job because they did a lot of lying. They had the word of God, but they manipulated it to work in their favor to keep themselves in power. And if you don't know which church that is, it's really easy to find out. That same church also killed people for reading the Bible. Killed people 
for printing the Bible in different languages. It comes to mind uh, the story of the Waldensians. If you've never heard them, Google that word and find out who they were. They were hiding in the hills. They had pieces of scripture sewn in the inside of their clothing so that they could read it and disseminate that information to others while being persecuted, while being hunted and killed just for reading God's word. Why? Because God's word is powerful and it brings to light the evil things that other people do. And the very people who say that they're supposed to protect that word and disseminate that, disseminate the gospel to people, uh, are the ones who are manipulating it and suppressing it. Now, the people within these churches, not the leadership, the people within these churches are good people and we are not to condemn them, but it is certain church leadership manipulating God's word that we need to be extremely weary of. And there's no difference between church leadership who tries to suppress God's word or change God's word and not let it get out to people and governments who do the same to their people who just want to communicate and, you know, talk about everyday daily stuff that's happening in their country. And remember, friends, in Revelation, the beast power is a religio-political power. So just go through there and study that out between Daniel and Revelation, and you'll find that out. And friends, I was going to leave this part for another video, but I'm going to talk about it today with you because it is so important. Your information is also for sale. I know you know that. So do whatever you can to protect yourself. If you didn't hear the other day that uh, NPD, National Public Database, it's a private company that's a data broker, and it's, I guess it's a legal data broker. They're constantly reselling that information to other companies and entities. So if you've ever put your email address in a website uh, to get a free download or free something or to get free shipping or whatever it is, they have sold that information to that big public data broker. Just this past April, they were hacked. They took 2.9 billion records they are selling them on what's called the dark web, which is essentially the black market for digital data. And there's some really horrible people out there who now have your social security number, your addresses, your phone numbers, your name, all of it. So the other day I went to this website called pentester.com. It's run by a gentleman, Ryan Montgomery, who is a white hat or ethical hacker and cybersecurity expert. They're not a sponsor of the channel, I just heard about this guy. They're out there trying to protect you and your data, you from getting scammed, and against child trafficking. It's easy to head over to their website and check out your information. All you enter is your name, the state that you live in, and your birth year, and it'll, I couldn't believe what popped up. And also check the states where you've lived previously, if you have. I couldn't believe what popped up. My social security number was on there, and, my date of birth and all the addresses I've lived in, at in certain states. It's all out there. And the reason I'm telling you this, friends, is because I want you to be prepared. I want you to protect yourself and your family and be prepared for communication to be shut down and your information to be stolen. It's getting much more easy for bad actors, whether they are in government or not, to be able to mess with your life. Now, me telling you this, Maybe they're gonna start coming after me more. I don't know. But it is my job to talk to you about Jesus Christ, about what we're doing out here on the homestead, about self-sufficiency, and about information that comes up that you need to be aware of like that. But again, please do not misunderstand me. This is not about fear. This is about information and taking that information and doing something positive with it. Fear is actually a sin in the Bible, so I do not want to stoke fear in you, and I don't want you to be fearful of what can happen to you. I want you to prepare. Just like Noah took the information that God gave him about a flood, which never happened before Noah's time, a flood coming, he took the information to build a boat and to tell others about the impending doom and tell others about God's love and to get on his boat. Sadly, only eight people did remember that. 
Okay, as we continue to see these platforms crack down on free speech, we will keep migrating, we will keep moving around, and we will try to be more fluid in doing that and diversify our means of communicating with you, and you need to do that with your friends as well. Now go check out this video right here. These are the reasons that homesteaders usually quit homesteading, and I don't want you to fall into that same trap. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.